Welcome to the Business Finishing School Podcast. Stop the insanity. Eliminate the chaos. Bring simplicity, probability, and leverage as operating values into your business and personal life so you can do more, earn more, and improve your relationships. This is Business Growth Simplified. Here's your host, Business Finishing School founder, Rick Sapio. It is the fourth Tuesday of the month, and you know what that means, principles and tactics. And in looking through the 48 modules of the Business Finishing School program, I keep being drawn back to legacy, legacy mindset, legacy thinking. It comprises the entire year four of the program. And it plays into our upcoming boot camp event. So if you're listening to this podcast after that event, I'm sorry. The next boot camp is coming up in a, well, not too long from now. Uh, this is the last Tuesday of February, and we're having an event in Dallas, the 17th event, the 17th Business Growth Summit event, the first week of March. So if you want to come, you can still come. You still have time. We have planes coming in into Dallas all the time. But the bigger thing is that event is about legacy, legacy thinking, legacy mindset. And it also plays into an upcoming book that I am publishing about the 100-year business. What would it be like for for your decision-making processes inside your business if you knew your business had to last 100 years, which means it has to last after you're gone and probably after your kids are gone and after all of your employees are gone. If you were creating a 100-year business, what would you do differently? Would you hire the same people? Would you have the same processes? Would you have the same business strategy? Would you be in the same industry? Would you have the same employees right now? Do you have people with you right now that are helping you build a 100-year business? I have found that whether or not you want to keep your business for 100 years, just by thinking this way changes how you make short-term decisions. It's very akin to health. If you want to live to be 100 years old, you're not going to eat fast food and drink a bottle of Jack Daniels every night. It's funny that I brought up the Jack Daniels thing. I, don't, I have this affinity for Frank Sinatra because I grew up, uh, and my family did too, in Hoboken, New Jersey. And they, um, uh, there's a famous Hoboken resident, Frank Sinatra. And the last 20 years of his life, he used to live in Palm Springs. And a friend of mine ran the, uh, oh, I forget what hotel it is now. I think it was the Hyatt. I, I could be wrong. There's a Hyatt, a Hyatt-owned property in Palm Springs that had a beautiful restaurant. I went there once. And uh, this friend of, uh, the sister of a very close friend of mine, my, my best friend my whole life, his sister ran the hotel. And Frank Sinatra would come there, she said, almost almost every night near the end. And he would bring a bottle of Jack Daniels. And he would have that bottle of Jack Daniels along with his dinner every time that he was there. He would always have to, you know, if it was a new employee, say, no, 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 I'm, I'm allowed to bring my own bottle of Jack. So I don't mean to offend anybody, but uh, the reason I bring that up is he lived a pretty long life by not thinking about 100 years of age and by not thinking about what he was putting into his body. But the reality is I think he lived to 83. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm getting off the point. The point of this podcast is to teach you to think long-term, which makes short-term decisions different, which makes running your business easier, which makes attracting talent that is more longer-term focused, makes that easier. And it's a very different values interview when you're finding long-term people, long-term clients, long-term employees, long-term vendors. I love this quote. I've found the expanded quote in preparation for this podcast from Marianne Williamson. Let me read it to you because this plays right into what we're talking about. And to set your mind right, I'm talking about legacy thinking, long-term business mindset, wrapped into a branded phrase called the 100-year business. Now, it doesn't mean you have to own it for 100 years, but just try to wrap all that together with me here and, and listen to this quote from that perspective. Achievement does not come from what we do, 
but from who we are. Our worldly power results from our personal power. Our career is an extension of our personality. People who profoundly achieve aren't necessarily people who do so much. There are people around whom things get done. Mahatma Gandhi and JFK were great examples of this. Their great achievements lay in all the energy they stirred in other people, the invisible forces they unleashed around them. By touching their own depths, they touched the depths within others. That kind of charisma, the power to affect what happens on earth from an invisible realm within, within is the natural right and function of the Son of God. And from her perspective, I'm going to keep reading, but I'm taking a pause here. Everyone living is a son or a daughter of God. If you think about it from that perspective, she's saying that JFK and Gandhi could think this way, and so can you. New frontiers are internal ones. The real stretch is always within us. Instead of expanding our ability or willingness to go out and get anything, we expand our ability to receive what is already here for us. Personal power emanates from someone who takes life seriously. The universe takes us as serious as we take it. There is no greater seriousness than the full appreciation of the power and importance of love. Miracles flow from the recognition that love is the purpose of our career. So let's, let's untangle this. This is deep. This is really deep. That is from Marianne Williamson. When you're on purpose in your life, which means your purpose is completely aligned with your spiritual being, with the spiritual side of why you're on this earth, if you completely understand your purpose and your business is a manifestation of that purpose, the alignment allows you to emanate out from yourself. So to use a real world example, when John F. Kennedy said we're going to send a man to the moon and return him safely to earth by the end of the decade of the 60s he died eight months later john f kennedy died and yet one of the most incredible achievements in human history happened it happened because he unleashed that power within others and that can only happen if whatever we're contemplating and we're articulating a goal around is aligned with who we are, what our purpose is, and why we're put on this earth. Marianne talks about miracles happening from that. So, this is a lot of information, but summarized in one sentence. If you know your purpose, if you can articulate your purpose around a big objective or big objectives, and if you could put those objectives inside a hundred-year mindset and ultimately a hundred-year company, I believe that your life gets much easier professionally today. Your decision-making gets easier. To go back to the example, if you want to live to be 100 years, you're not going to drink a bottle of Jack Daniels every night, probably. Now, some of you may try to test fate, but same goes true with a business. If you want to have a 100-year business, you're not going to hire your alcoholic out-of-work brother-in-law to run the business. You're gonna make decisions aligned with the long term. So the purpose of our upcoming business summit and the purpose of business finishing school year four and the purpose of this 100 year thinking which is the product, um, which the product of which is three books, 100 year company, the 100 year saving solution and the 100-Year Financial Mindset, three different uh, attempts to clarify this very rich, deep topic. Uh, the purpose of that is to live in, a, in alignment with your sole <laughs> purpose for being on this planet. I hope this is making sense to you. So all of this plays into why we started Business Finishing School in the first place, which is we just saw so many entrepreneurs that were running around like chickens with their head cut off, that weren't building saleable businesses that we could invest into. And at the end of the day, when they don't have that saleable business, they don't have employee satisfaction, they don't have vendor satisfaction, they don't have client satisfaction, and ultimately, they don't have simplicity, probability, and leverage. Many of you listening to this know that everything 
ends with simplicity, probability, and leverage. What should you be doing now to create simplicity, probability, and leverage in your business around 100-year thinking? That's the big question. So this may be the first time you've heard me talk about 100-year thinking. It may be the 10th time. But uh, from my perspective, it should be an important time. You should be taking a pause right now and saying, wait a minute. Is what I'm doing long-term focused? Is it impacting my legacy? Is it Im implementing in my business simplicity, probability, and leverage around a 100-year time frame? Again, you don't have to have your business 100 years, and your kids or grandkids don't have to have 100 years. By baking 100 years into the values and decision-making of the company, it changes how decisions are made and ultimately the results of the company. So, you know, you're not doing last-minute changes to everything. Yeah, it's very different. I, I was looking at our culture at large in preparation for this call, and I've done a lot of reading around Cal Newport's work with uh, a book entitled Deep Work and a follow-on book entitled Digital Minimalism. And what I'm struck with in reading his work is that you've got two different humans now in the United States. You've got the people that have the ability to do deep work because they don't have any electronic addictions they're not on social media they're not doing all the you know seven seconds at a time between switching tasks they're not you know on netflix all the time you know you, you watch the average person they're fl they're flipping from device to device to app to app to web page to web page but the people that cal talks about emulating are the people that can do deep work who can work for eight hours at a time without interruption without a cell phone to look at but they're just doing deep work like you know we used to work 50 years ago and so the difference between the people who are doing deep work in their career completely aligned with their purpose and everybody else there's a gap wider than the Grand Canyon between those two people but the the sick part about this the sad part about it is only a very tiny fraction of our population is equipped to do deep work and has done the work in their lives to focus on their purpose and their deep work I bring that up because it's exactly the same analogy with companies. There are companies that are set up and equipped for the long haul, whose employees are completely al aligned around this long-term purpose, and then there's everybody else. They're reacting to the latest social media ad or the latest and greatest software edition or you know this, this outsourced you know, XYZ talent. They're not really trying to build a foundation based on the principles that we teach in this program, but also based on creating a legacy-oriented business. And I'm adding on this podcast 100-year thinking because 100-year thinking is a new wrinkle. It's probably a branded way of saying uh, what year four in business finishing school is all about. That's, four, uh, uh, that's the fourth year of a four-year program but many of you are black belts, and you could uh, now, after Morgan insisted on it, you could actually do all 48 modules in one year if you want. It was designed just like a language takes approximately four years to get fluent in. It was designed to be implemented over four years. But the bottom line is that the last 12 mo modules, the fourth year, is all about this kind of thinking. What do I, be, what do I need to be doing in my personal life, in my business life, and inside my business entity? that will allow me to get the benefit of long-term thinking and simplicity, probability, and leverage, and it's all there. So I want to encourage you to, to embrace what we're talking about here. Take Marianne Williamson's quote to heart that when you think about and embrace this way of living, you start emanating a purpose, and it's almost like providence moves. I love the quote I've heard a long time ago. I have no idea who it's attributed to, but when you're crystal clear of, of, of what you want and you make a commitment, providence moves. And, you know, it, it's almost as if whether you like it or not, you're going to get what you're committed to. Almost like John F. Kennedy being so clear about going to the moon that he was not there and it still happened. So I uh, uh, am making an appeal to you 
to consider 100 year thinking, legacy thinking in your family, in your health, in your business, in any entity you're associated with, it will change the game. It will change the results. And it just this thinking alone will add some level of simplicity, probability, and leverage to your life. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Finishing School Podcast, where we teach you business growth simplified. For more information on Business Finishing School or their Business Growth Summit event, visit businessfinishingschool.com.